this is my customized Perl Linux OS 4 system I'm not doing a review of the Perl operating system just my personal impression and findings after using this for about five weeks as my daily driver it's running here on a Mintbox Mini which is a mini computer mini PC that runs about 1 gigahertz uh, turbos up to I think 1.6 gigahertz with four cores this one's upgraded from 4 to 8 gigs of RAM and the internal MSATA SSD from 64 up to 120 gigabytes I've seen some reviews on this OS on YouTube etc but none mentioned some of what I found myself so I thought I would share my findings my install went seamless from memory although apparently some of the earlier ISOs had some problems but mine did not there's the ISO file there so it actually says Perl desktop with GNOME yada 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 I'm not actually a Mac fan or user never really used one I just like the look and feel of the the live system when I run it for the first time so I thought I'd give it a go the basic changes that I've done are replace the default dock with Cairo dock and change some of the theming and comp his settings to my my likings after I first installed this I was getting uh, an error um, Microsoft core fonts missing error something like that when it first booted up and after a little bit of googling I found these couple of files here and one of them although I don't actually remember which one uh, cured the problem and the reason I don't remember is because uh, I expected I'd probably be wiping this out or or starting again the volume was one of the first things I noticed that I had some sort of uh, just minimize all that issue with the only way I could change volume in the beginning was by clicking on this and then moving this slider and now with the Cairo dock you can see as I roll my mouse wheel over the volume icon down in the bottom on the dock there it's affecting the, uh, the system volume there and this was an issue because my wireless Logitech keyboard mouse combo the multimedia keys only work in some apps but not the system volume and I'm pretty sure that it normally works the system volume most most of the other distros that I've tried it's still a little annoying when for example full screen on YouTube I have to exit full screen or use the um, awesome compiz effects to get to another virtual desktop where I can get to the the volume before going back to where I was some of the default theming looked a little unusual to me when I first tried this for example here in the system monitor these headings up the top another one was synaptic package manager same thing up the top got these oversized menus and the rows here are quite large as well another place I noticed this was in the history for Firefox let's get rid of those it's the uh, history for Firefox you can see it's quite large up the top there and as I say I actually thought that was a fault like some theming gone gone a little bit bad but I've watched a few more um, videos and whatever on YouTube about this particular operating system and Macs whatever and as far as I, I know that's actually sort of how a Mac is but I'm no expert or authority on that matter so I can't really comment beyond that 
and there's also sometimes you get this so you can see the theming on there is um, just different than than the general theming that I've got going here with the, for example this is the utility disks so it's a little bit hit and miss but I have seen this type of um, so I can't grab it there I've got to grab here no where can I grab oh, there we go uh, I have seen this type of thing in in other Linux distros as well uh, doesn't stop stop it working or anything like that it just just the way that it looks but as I say apparently those large menus and some of the other stuff is is pretty much the way that's supposed to look from what I can work out a couple of other things I noticed was the numlock key on my keyboard has to be enabled each each time I reboot the system and the print screen button on the keyboard has no effect um, so you know I can get around print screen I just run a little screenshot up there numlock I just press it when uh, I want to use the numpad another um, another one that I've noticed is the the password for example I'll start this I'll just get all settings the firewall wasn't installed I've installed that but for example if I click on here you see the padlock turns up and that's because the dialog box is actually turned up behind the the panel that we're in and that caught me out quite a few times in the early days and just on the note of the firewall there for whatever reason I have to enable it each time I start the system if I want that running but again that was um, just some extra software that, that I installed when this system was was fairly new still I recall seeing some leftover session information or, or, or such I, every now and again I'd see the username Scott who I believe is the developer uh, just you know here and there when I go to put a password in or something like that it just turn up so just just a little untidy looking in places at times and also think the browser was a little bit I think when I started the browser it had a it's got a different um, home screen on it now but the search box used to be you know just down here somewhere rather than right up near the top there and I'm pretty sure that didn't work I'm not a hundred percent on that so don't quote me on that and I used to have to come up and actually do me searches up there but that's um, you know they're pretty minor minor little things starting to get nitpicky almost all that aside I um, haven't had any crashes or such the system is stable and reliable and totally usable uh, particularly when you consider the the size and the low specifications of the PC that it's running on and then add to that the compass effects going on as well so I'm pretty happy with that it's it's completely usable and functional and whatever else and normally when I first start the system if I come into the system monitor here and go to resources it'll normally be running around 660 megabytes of RAM and the, the CPUs will be just you know five ten percent whatever ticking away here it's obviously working pretty hard now because I'm screen casting and whatever else so pretty happy with it overall so I'm still using it after five weeks without hopping off to another distro or whatever and I haven't even bothered to fix the little the little niggles aren't bothering me that much so obviously that's not a, a great hindrance to me I liked when I first seen this I liked that when I started playing with just just a few tweaks here and there and I pretty much had the system as you see it here now and I found that it was quite quite enjoyed using it and I found it quite visually appealing as well 
while still being fast and functional. You know, got got all the the compies stuff going on there and whatever. So I found it quite fast and quite functional, especially when you take in consideration the the lack of horsepower in the machine that it's running on. At this stage, I've got no no plans on changing it. Uh, I'm quite happy with it. As I say, said earlier, I sort of figured I'd probably be reinstalling it and doing it all again in a different way, but I've just kept plugging away at it and quite happy with that. So I'll probably eventually getting around to fixing some of those niggles, especially if somebody knows how to fix them. If you, if you could uh, leave leave some comments or instructions below, that'd be great. Uh, other than that, I'm actually quite happy with Perl Linux OS 4 on my little mint box.